Hey folks, Dave Anderson here. And in this quick tip, we are going to look at perhaps the uh, most asked Articulate Storyline 360 question. Actually, you could just say Storyline because it's been asked the same since uh, Storyline first launched. And that is, how do you allow the learners to move forward in the course only after completing a series of modules or chapters? So it's not a single slide type interaction. Uh, you have a menu slide, the learners bouncing out to different slides in the course. They return to the menu slide. You want to show a completed state, but then only after all items have been completed that we let the learner move forward. All right, so this question was just asked yesterday, so I thought I'd uh, walk through the, 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 the technique to solve this, this particular question. It's really the same question, same answer every time, just looks a little bit different depending on, on the file. So the example here is the learner it needs to go through each of these five, five chapters. So the way it's set up is, makes sense that the learners can jump forward in any order to any one of five scenes but only after completing the final scene can they move forward in, in the course. So if we look at each of the slides, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. There's an auto, it's a trigger that jumps to the next slide at the end of each timeline. So it is in kiosk mode and it gets to the end of the slide and then it'll come back to the menu slide. So the first thing I wanna do is just kind of clean up some of this and give these a little better names. So for example, here on the menu slide, I'm gonna call this menu rather than untitled slide. And then for the menu slide here, we have button one, two, three, and four. Let's just make this a little bit easier to, to look at, measurable. I'm just copying the names for from each of the slides here, pasting it on the button. Reckon if you wanna jump ahead, you probably could do that. This is kind of repetitive work here. But it's going to make it a lot easier for me to find the objects that I'm looking for when I start working with the, uh, the triggers and even some variables. Oops. Okay, so the buttons are named. That's all set up a little bit easier. Let's take a look at what we have what we have happening on uh, the each of the in, in last slides, right? So the slide's going to play. It's going to go here. We've got a jump to slide menu when the timeline ends, and that's the same for the first four. But on the last slide, it gets a little, it's a little weird. So this is more of a design decision, kind of a, a choice or some, some considerations for how we want to set this up. So on this last slide, click time bound. They come to the time bound slide. First slide ends, jumps to the next slide. That makes sense. And then we get to this next one. And it's this button right here that has the completion trigger. So we got to think about this, right? We've recreated the entire menu here. These buttons aren't active, and we want the learner to really click this finish button. However, there's nothing stopping the learner from starting on this first slide, right, the menu slide, and then clicking to time bound, jumping to that time bound slide. So I moved one, and then immediately finishing the, the course. So we could do a couple things here. We could turn this, this finish button here. What are we calling it? Let's call it finish, uh, button finish. We could turn this to hidden button fish. Okay, button finished. We could, we could hide this button or we could disable it and then prevent the learner from moving forward. But in a sense, what we're showing here is really the menu slide, which is where the learner returns after each time they complete one of the end slides in the scene. So in a sense, we don't really need this slide here. Instead, what we could do is just have the entire slide finish the same way it has been by jumping back to the main menu slide and then showing that finish button right here. That would eliminate the extra slide and then we could really have the same elements that we have here, but on that top slide. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna select these three objects. So it looks like it's a finish button. There's an arrow, instructions, and a finish button. I'm going to press Control X, and that'll copy the trigger, so that's good. And up here, I'm going to, well, let me just, I'm gonna move all this up a little bit. There's no reason to have that last slide, especially if we're recreating all of the, the elements. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna take the I will take these three elements. Oh, good grief. There we go. 
I'm going to cut those and then I'm going to paste them in the state of our finished button. So states and then edit states. And let's just drop those in. That looks good. And then we'll set the default state to disabled. Actually, we'll set it to hidden because we don't need to see that here. So the initial state is going to be set to hidden, which means we won't see that at all. But when the learner, let's go back to our story view, the learner comes to this, this scene right here, which is the time bound. When they finish this slide, they'll be taken back up here. So we can actually get rid of this slide. So delete it. And then when they finish, jump to slide, we'll say jump to the menu slide when the timeline ends and we'll come back here. And only after completing all of those modules or, or scenes will this button now be enabled and show and show completion. So we need triggers, uh, need triggers. Of course we need triggers. We need variables as well. So we need a variable to measure when the learner has completed each one of these five scenes. So what we're gonna do is add five true false variables. True false is probably the easiest way to tackle this because we can add a true false variable to determine whether each scene is completed. True or false, yes or no, good, no, good, bad, yes, no. So we'll add our first variable, click the create new variable button and we'll call this one, I'm just gonna call it S completed, S complete, C-O-M-P-L-E-T, uh, true, false. And by default, we can say false because why? Well, it's not, not, it's not finished. We haven't started anything. The user hasn't completed it. And so we'll create another one. We'll call this one M complete. We'll make that true, false. And then we'll say another one, S-M-A, so A complete, true. And then we'll make an R, R complete. And then one more, and that'll be for the T, T complete. Okay, so we have five variables, and we'll use those to track the completion. Now, I'm gonna add this here because this, I'm gonna do something extra right here just because this comes up a lot, and it's usually asked, and that is that you wanna show completion, some kind of visual completion state to the learner. Well, if we look at each of these buttons right here that we have set up under the states tab, we have a visited state. Now, visited state is a go-to built-in state when you wanna show the learner has clicked or interacted with a particular object. However, as soon as they click this button, it's going to show register visited, meaning even if they only went to the first slide right here in that first scene, the visited state's still going to apply because they visited that button. They, the state is, is visited. But we wanna track completed states here for the entire scene. So actually, I'm gonna close these. I'm just gonna right click and choose close other tabs. I, a visited state is not gonna work for us. We could leave the visited state, that's fine. But instead what we want is we want a completed state, or a, I'm sorry, a custom state, I'll call it completed, but we want a custom state so that we can choose when to show that state and use that state as a way to indicate that it's been completed. So to do that, I'm just going to make it a completely different color from the rest. And then let's just add a icon here from content library, maybe a check mark. And so I'm going to create a custom state for each of these these uh, five buttons and then we'll use that as a way to visually indicate that it's been complete and I'm throwing this in it's not really what the what the user asked for in this case but because it generally follow this type of, of um, effect is usually included in this kind of ask about showing completion and before they can move on so here we'll add a, a little check mark icon, I'm gonna copy it real quick and I've got this dark state. I don't hope it doesn't compete with that, right? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, and so I just need to add this for the remaining uh, five, uh, four states. So we'll call this one completed. I would like to use the format painter, but because each of these elements is a different color, each of the buttons is a different color, it would paste my completed state with the icon there for me, but it would also, copy that same color format into the remaining items. So I don't want to change the colors in this case. So we'll just have to do this manually. You know, that'd be kind of a, I think a neat effect to have a format painting option where you could choose just to paste in a specific state or object. I think I will make that request. Okay, 
couple more relevant edit states. And again, you can see, right, uh, so much of what we do in e-learning is just repetitive work. That's why knowing your shortcut keys, control V, control C to copy, control V to paste, those are just essential. I mean, it's just going to make it that much easier for working as well as any other production tips that you have to help you work a little bit quicker. So time bound, and I hopefully I made that last, the previous one dark. I'll have to check that again. Okay, so I've added completed states. Completed. I didn't, yeah, see, I didn't think I had done that. So there's the relevant. Let me just double check it here. Okay, so we have the completed state for each of these. All right, we're mostly there. So we have a we have the, the the custom state that we created. Now we're going to go ahead and add the variables to each of the scenes that will indicate that they've the learner has completed each of those scenes. So I'm going to come to well, actually I've been calling these scenes, but I just realized they're not in separate scenes. It's all part of the same. It's all part of the same scene. That's totally fine. It doesn't change anything. I just need to refer to these now as the last slide in each of the, uh, the categories. Okay, so instead what I'll do is I'm going to come to this last slide, right? So if I'm looking at this at the last slide right here, when the learner gets to this slide, we can mark it complete. Now remember the, the timeline is going to automatically jump to the next slide or back to the menu slide when the timeline ends. To make this easy and to make it easier probably for us to test, I'm going to change the variable from, true, from false to true so adjust variable, and we'll say what is our our goals go in S is the first one to true when the timeline starts. I'm just gonna say when the timeline starts on the slide, right? The timeline it's not that long, 23, 25 seconds. So instead of waiting till it ends and having to wait to test it that way, I mean some of the slides might be longer. I'm gonna have that variable change or adjust as soon as the timeline loads or as soon as the slide loads and the timeline begins. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier for us to test. All right, so just variable, set it to true when the timeline starts on this slide. I'm going to copy this trigger, so I can right click and choose copy, or I could just come up here and choose to copy that selected trigger, another production shortcut. And then for the last slide in each scene, and if I bring this over, you can, you can see in here, I'll say the last slide, I'm gonna to choose to paste that, that, that trigger I just copied, but this one would be the measurable, so I'm gonna change that to M, so send the timeline starts in this slide, set M to true. This last slide here will be for the A, so paste, and then we just change that. And just sort of a side comment, this is again why grouping your tasks is a way to work a lot faster, right? So I created all of those variables at once rather than creating the variables as I need them here at the end of each scene. By doing grouping your, your uh, tasks by related task, you can work a little quicker because you can actually work more in that assembly line or production line type of uh, uh, environment. S-M-A-R-R -R, <laughs> and then T is the last one. All right, so set to true. Okay, honestly, I think we just about have it right here. So when the timeline starts, set true. The last thing I want to do here is just to make this easy for us to to track and make sure that things are working, I'm going to add what's called reference variables. So a reference variables, there we go. Reference variables let us view the variable's current value. So by default, the value is false for everything, but we want to know when it's true. We know when, when it should be true. It's when it click when the those slides begins at the end. But instead, we want to make sure that, some say smart, we want to make sure that the the um, variable does in fact change so we can help troubleshoot what we're working on. So we have uh, specific and I'm just typing this out specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound. Okay so not it. separate word separate word time bound it's one word isn't it? So specific, what I want to do is now I'm going to insert a variable reference for each of these, each of these 
uh, words right here based on the variable that we created. So from the insert tab, I can come over here to reference. So reference means display or refer to the current value. So I'm just going to go in order. So I'll say S and that says false. And then I'm going to insert one here now for measurable, which should also be indeed false and then attainable and so on. So they're all false by default, right? SMA. But as we hit each of those slides, we'll see them change, or at least we, we should hope they change time, right? And then I can just um, I'm gonna put that up here and we'll probably make it white so that it's easy to see here on this dark background. All right, you ready to test it? Let's test it. Let's see what we have here. And then we'll add the button at the very end. So let's see. One thing I want to do, I, I remember on this one, I can't scrub forward or move forward until I, until we complete it. I don't want to wait for that. It's free restriction, but I have here allow user to drag the seek bar. I don't, I just don't want to wait for it the, the whole time. Okay, so we play, and I think we have some background music here. So right now, we can jump in any order. I'll go in order, but it won't matter, and I'm just going to jump ahead. This first scene has, I think, three, uh, the first module, first category has three slides in it. So the variable should have changed, and there it is. We see that it says true. So let's try measurable now. And this is why that variable reference is so helpful for us, because it's going to allow us to validate that at least things are changing. So there's uh, measurable is now true and we'll see attainable. And all I'm doing is just jumping ahead. I know that this, the navigation should be restricted, attainable. And I'm, the more I think about, <laughs> the more I think about the time bound, I think I did misspell that. All right, so this is the last one. Relevant is true. And I should probably have a hyphen in there. Anyway, so then we'll try time bound and then come here and then it jumps back to the menu. Cool, now I know what I'm doing. So now I can validate that these are all working correctly so we can add the final triggers that enables the learner to move forward when they've completed the this interaction. So let's 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 show first add the triggers to make each of these buttons change to the completed state and then we'll change the finish button from hidden to to normal. So our first one will be change the state of specific. So change the state common common action to normal, nope, to the completed state, the custom state. And we'll do that not when user clicks, but when the timeline starts. So this gets a little tricky sometimes for folks. You think when the variable changes is when you'd want that to, uh, when you'd want that to change. But because we're re returning to a slide from a different slide where the variable changed, we have to sort of check in with Storyline, ask Storyline, hey, did that variable change? So it, yeah, the event is when the timeline starts on this slide, and then the condition being if, if the s variable is equal to true. So if that's equal to true, then you can go ahead and change that button to complete it. So click OK. And let's just copy this trigger. So I'm going to say uh, copy the selected trigger. And then I'm going to shift click the remaining items here to multi select them. And then I'll paste that trigger. Now I do have to come in here and, and modify each one of these because it's not, it's, it's, going to copy the exact trigger. So in this tape case, it's uh, changed the object to measurable to completed if when the timeline starts on this slide, if measurable complete equals true. And then we need attainable. So double click this set button specific change of state of attainable to completed, complete when the timeline starts on this slide, if A is true. So when I pasted that, I realized I it copied the wrong timeline event, so I need to double check that. So this next one's relevant, button relevant, and we'll say change it to customs complete when the timeline starts on this slide, if R is equal to true. And then finally for the time bound, We want to say if time set to state complete again same 
kind of the rep repetitive work here timeline starts on this slide if the t complete is equal to true. So I have specific if s, then I have measurable m, attainable a, relevant r, and then OK. And then finally, let's add the trigger here that changes that state from hidden to normal. So we'll say change the state of our button finished to normal when, and we'll say when the timeline starts. But now we need to check in with all of those variables on the condition that A is equal to true. And let's do this. I'm going to duplicate these. I can just I can continue adding these one by one, right? If M equals true, but Let's just duplicate them. So we'll say I'll duplicate it and say R duplicate and then we'll say S and then finally and T. So the and is important. They all have to be complete, complete uh, to be true. And then we should see that change. All right. Well, <laughs> fingers crossed. Let's see how this how this works here. OK, so it won't matter which order we go in. Now, the variable references up top, obviously, we'd probably delete those afterwards once we know that things are working. We just we want to see it work. Cool. First one is true, and we can also see that we have that custom state here for the change. So let's go in different order and see how this works. I know it's going to take me to the next menu item, <clears throat> but we can still go out of order. There's attainable. That's also true. We'll come back to measurable. Okay. First three are true, all showing true here, relevant. I think we have a couple slides here. And now that's true. And then finally, when this one finishes, when this slide finishes, not only should the buttons all be completed, but we should also see that finish button also available. And it didn't show. Awesome. So we have an idea of where to look for our problem. It's not changing that state from hidden to normal, even though all five of those are true. So let's take a look and see what we have here. Change the button, finish date, when the timeline, ah, when the timeline starts, I needed to say this slide. If A is true, okay. All right, let's try it one more time. That had the wrong timeline starting, but that's where those variable references can make this so easy for us. So let's go through this one more time a little quicker. So there's my S. I'll come down here. Okay. Relevant. And then I would go back, obviously, and update this so that we can't scrub ahead because that was one of the conditions of the file. Now this is finishing, and then there's our finish button, and we can move forward. So again, when you are just evaluating what's happened on a single slide, you can use visited states. If you are evaluating what's happened in other slides, and then and then when you when the learner comes back to a hub slide or main slide, and you want to know what's happened out there, you need variables. You need to track that action away from the main slide, and that's where why uh, visited states wouldn't work for us. True false variables certainly uh, are easy to work with. We just need one true false variable for each of the chapters, the modules, the scenes, however we're setting this up. Yeah, it's one slide, here, one scene here, but each of these is sort of acting as its own scene or category for each of the, the letters of the categories of the SMART goals. Hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, you can post in the comments or just hit us up in the eLearning Heroes community. We'll be more than happy, happy to help. Have a great day.